Boker Tov, it's wonderful to be here uh, with you. I hope that you are enjoying this beautiful spring weather and that uh, you're having an easy start to your day. I'm Rabbi Shainer from Temple Sinai, and I'm really excited to share this morning's Sinai stream with you, which is our daily chance to connect, reflect, and remember. We'll begin in a moment with a simple prayer of gratitude for the fact that we are here. Uh, it's not an easy thing. It's not a simple thing to just be here, to just exist, to be in these bodies that we have and to have them function basically normally. Uh, our lungs have to fill with oxygen and our blood vessels have to circulate plasma through our entire body. And our nerves have to conduct uh, the electroneural impulses that allow us to think and move and breathe. And all of that has to happen in a way that we don't even notice uh, for it to be comfortable. And so um, wherever you are in that, if, if things are functioning basically normally this morning, then, uh, then having, having some gratitude for that is not, a, is not a bad thing. Taking notice of how hard everything in your body is working to make you, to let you be here is uh, really a practice that our tradition gives us. And so we say this blessing uh, and begin this morning with that gratitude. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher yatsar et adam bechokma uvaravo nekavim nekavim chalulim chalulim galui beaduf lifnei chis ech vodecha sheim ipatech echad mehem o yisatem echad mehem yev shal hitkayem v'lamod lefanecha baruch ata Adonai rofe chol basar umafli la'asot Blessed eternal God creator of the universe, you have fashioned our bodies with wisdom, creating within us a finely balanced network. To stand before you in prayer is itself a fragile miracle. Eternal our God, we praise you as the healer of body and spirit. We take a moment now to share gratitude for the blessing that all of that is for a purpose that um, being here is step one, but uh, using our time that we have to create meaning is another thing. And uh, we have that opportunity. And so we call that Torah. And we say a blessing for the ability to engage in words of Torah together to help us to fulfill that purpose of finding meaning in our lives. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidshan v'mitzvotav V'tzivanu l'rasok B'divrei Torah V'harev ba Adonai Eloheinu Et divrei Torah t'cha b'finu V'fi amcha b'et Yisrael V'nia anachnu v'tzaetzaeinu V'tzaetzaei amcha b'et Yisrael Kulanu yodei shmecha V'lomdei Torah t'cha l'ishma Baruch ata Adonai Blessed eternal God, creator of the universe, you sanctify our lives with mitzvot and command us to engage in Torah study. Eternal our God, may your words of Torah be sweet to us. Let every generation, young and old, the whole family of Israel, come to know you through the study of Torah for its own sake. Eternal God, we praise you as the teacher of Torah to the people of Israel. And now we engage in words of Torah which are familiar, but which are important because they remind us that we are not on our own here, that we are not a, a collection of isolated individuals, but part of a, a, a whole, a unified piece uh, of one with that which is higher than ourselves. And we say that when we say that God is one here with the words of Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch 
שם כבוד מלכותו לעולם ועד. ואהבת את אדוני אלוהיך בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך. והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך. ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם. ושיבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכתך ובקומך. וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך. וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. ויאמר אדוני אל משה לאמור, דבר אל בני ישראל, ואמרת עליהם, ועשו להם ציצית על כנפי בגדיהם לדורותם. ונתנו על ציצית הכנף פתיל תכלת. והיה לכם לציצית, וראיתם אותו, וזכרתם את כל מצוות אדוני, ועשיתם אותם. ולא תטו אחרי לבבכם ואחרי עיניכם אשר אתם זונים אחריהם. למרן תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם. אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. We are dealing with some difficult news these days. Um, in particular, for me, I'm, I'm uh, really kind of sad that um, we won't be attending summer camp this summer. Um, I know that uh, our Reformed Jewish summer camp, Camp George, decided to close its doors for the summer a couple of weeks ago. But then this week, uh, Premier Doug Ford came out and said that there won't be any summer camps in Ontario, any, any sleepaway camps. And this is, uh, it's sad for me personally because I was very much hoping to make a visit to our, our uh, families, to our campers um, this summer to spend some time as faculty at Camp George. But it's also a really devastating for a lot of our families for a couple of reasons. And I, I think one of them is certainly that camp offers parents a little bit of time to themselves, which is desperately needed right now. And one of the, it also offers our kids a chance to have some recreation and spend time with their peers, which is also really important. But I think part of what makes this news so difficult for so many of us is what is because what camp is really for is developing something we are in short supply of, and that is curiosity. When our kids go to camp, they have the opportunity to try on a new version of themselves in a safe way that is away from their family and away from school and lets them explore new parts of themselves that they didn't necessarily get the chance to see we're there before. And it leads them to asking the kinds of questions that help to, to foster curiosity about themselves and about others. So they get to ask questions like, can I be friends with someone new? Can I try out this new skill or this new game or this new sport, this new craft? Can I talk differently? Can I play differently? Can I be someone else for a little bit? All of these lead us to the really big questions that, that help to foster curiosity about ourselves and others. In particular, they lead us to the question, why are things the way they are? And do they have to be that way? The reason why I'm worried about the, the need to develop curiosity in our children and in ourselves, even without camp, is because I really believe that curiosity is the building block, the basic structure in which we learn to have compassion. It allows us to cultivate the patience and the interest 
to understand ourselves and others and to walk a little, a little way in their shoes before we rush in to decide whether their actions are good or bad, whether, they, whether we can have a relationship with them or not. And I think that as adults, we don't, do, we don't engage in this kind of curiosity enough. We're, we're short on time, and short on patience, and we rush to judgment really often. And so I'm thinking about a situation in which we, we really could benefit from developing that kind of curiosity and how we could get there, even without camp for a summer. So let's say someone in your family or your community just gets under your skin. You know, you could approach that person in one of two ways. You could grit your teeth and bear it every time you have to come in contact with that person and leave, you, you know, leave the situation with a kind of, of begrudging relief. Or you could ask that person a question that you're genuinely interested in and take the time to listen to their answer. The benefit of doing it that way, of trying to be curious, is that at the very least, you'll have more understanding of yourself and why, and why you feel so worked up about someone. And you'll have a little more understanding of this other person and where they're coming from. It's not necessary to jump all the way to giving them a big hug and loving them in order to benefit from the kind of basic curiosity that allows us to build compassion in our lives. And even though it's a shame that we can't have camp this summer, we can continue to work to build curiosity and compassion within ourselves, within our children, within our families, within our community by asking genuine questions and taking the time to listen for the answers. This challenge that we're facing right now is not the only challenge we're going to ever face, but that curiosity and compassion is what's gonna get us through this and others. And it's gonna help us get through them together. And so if you are uh, worried about curiosity and compassion like I am, there's another way we can practice that this morning, which is to turn our thoughts to those who are in need of healing, whether physical, mental, spiritual. We turn our thoughts now to those who are ill, who are isolated, and who are working hard on the front lines to keep us safe and healthy in this moment. Mishaberach avotenu Avraham Yitzchak v'Yaakov v'imotenu Sara, Rivka, Lea v'Rachel v'yirape et kol makotenu yiratzon milfanecha Adonai Eloheinu l'achal imam o l'rapotam v'yishlach lanu mehera rufua shlema v'aterat shalom v'nomar amen. May the one who blessed our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and our mothers Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel heal all who suffer. May it be your will to provide healing and strength, reveal to us the holiness of life, the wholeness of shalom, and let us say together, Amen. To think of those who are in need in this way is important, but it's also important to reach out and to think about what it is that they need besides our prayers and to try and offer that to them. And so as we as we develop our curiosity and compassion this morning, um, know that prayer is an important first step, but that we are also called to action. And now we take a moment to think of those who are in need, not just of healing, but of support as they remember those of their loved ones who helped guide them to where they are today, who helped to foster that compassion and curiosity in their lives, but are no longer with us. In particular, this morning, we think of those who died recently within the last 30 days and those who died at this time in years past. 
This morning, we are remembering those who died recently. Marsha Mason, Pauline Milrad, Ovid Ben-Ari, Andrew Kosman, Paula Rich, Susie Mate Vidas, Esther Siskent, Cheryl Okorowski, Irving Coven, and Julius Bell, as well as Amit Ben Yigal, an Israeli victim of terror. And our thoughts turn also to those who died at this time in years past. On this Friday, May 22nd, 28th of ER, the 43rd day of the counting of the Omer, we remember Ray Butel, Irene Brott Landau, Charles Friedman, Ruth Geller, Howard Gitter, Eugene Gladstone, Michael Goldstep, Harry Jacobs, Martin Miller, Nathan Osher, Alfredo Roth, Gertrude Stitt, David Valensky, Dennis Waldman, and Anna Zweigenberg. With their memories in our thoughts and in our hearts, we turn to words glorified, sanctified by memory and words glorified by hope, the words of the Kadishia Tom. Yitgadal vi kadash shmeh rabba, be alma divrachir utevyam lich machute, be chayechon of yomechon, of chaye de hol bet Israel, be agala vizman kariv, vimru, amen. Yehe shmeh rabba me barach, le alam le alme al maya, yit barach vit tabach, vit paar, vit roman, vit nasse, vit hadar, vit ale, vit halal. Shmet de Kudsha, Berichu. Le Ela min kol birchata, shirata. Tush birchata, venechemata. Da amiran be alma, vimru. Amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shmaya. Vechaim alenu ve al kol Israel, vimru. Amen. O se shalom bim romav. Hu yara se shalom. Alenu ve al kol Israel, vimru. Amen. May the source of peace. Send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who remember. And let us say together, Amen. Well, it's been wonderful spending this time with you these last three days. Um, I look forward to seeing you all soon. I hope in person soon enough, but until then, uh, please do join us for, continue to join us for our virtual offerings where we can spend time together as a community including our Shabbat services tonight at 6.30 and tomorrow at 10 a.m. And our Shavuot celebrations, of which we have a lot going on next week on Thursday night and Saturday, uh, sorry, Thursday night and Friday. I skipped a day there, you see, that was, uh, that was not what I meant to do. Um, we will be uh, having our confirmation service. We'll have a teaching for just our community from Rabbi Larry Englander, and we will join in the Canadian Council of Reform Judaism's all night uh, study session with rabbis from across Canada, including Rabbi Dolgan and myself. Um, we will uh, hope that you get a chance to get out there, enjoy the beautiful weather we're having, and to uh, make it a great day. Boker Tov.